died for the faith of the gospel. Indeed, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And thanks, Brian, for reading that. And that greeting came from Paul's letter to the Philippians. I'm thankful to be able to see all of you and to share a message of God with you this morning. And this morning, I want to encourage you with a message about accepting life as it comes by living in the Holy Spirit and trusting in God's providential hand. The Lord provides. And the song we sung, Living by Faith, Trusting and Confiding in His Great Love. Thanks for Brother Longby. I think it's an inspired choice huh? that, that we work together as a worship session where every one of us do our part. And the message comes through of the Lord's presence and the Lord's guiding hand for all of us. And so the, the message is about living whatever happens. Living on the edge of whatever happens. Something's going to happen. And whatever happens, we have this confidence and we have this trust and we have this steadiness to go through it. And there is this hope that all will be well. And so I'll bring you through a few examples of some of this. So to live whatever happens is to embrace the guiding hand of God. Like how the Lord took the children of Israel by the hand to lead them out of slavery from the land of Egypt into the promised land. And this morning, we will take a few lessons from the verses we just read from Apostle Paul. How he lived a whatever happens kind of life. The first thing is about um, when Paul began his letter to the church in the city of Philippi, the apostle Paul visited this city during his second missionary journey, and he begins his letter like this, Paul and Timothy, servants of Jesus Christ. Just focus on the word servant. In this letter, he identified himself as a servant of Jesus Christ. But in his other letters, like the one in Ephesians, he identified himself as an apostle. So he has a title. But here he doesn't use a title. And I think among friends, we don't need titles. I don't need to be elder among you. I am your brother too. And so, here, he identified himself as a servant because he has a story to tell. He has a testimony to share. He doesn't need a title to share a testimony. And you compare the Pharaoh and Moses during that Moses time. Pharaoh is a title. He has a title. But Moses, he had a testimony. And you remember King Ahab and Elijah during that time, the prophet Elijah. King Ahab was king of the northern kingdom. But Elijah, he had a testimony and he doesn't need a title. Another example, Mary Magdalene and Herodias. Herodias was King Herod's wife, and he, she was the one who had caused John the Baptist to be beheaded. She had the title, but Mary Magdalene had a testimony. And what a great testimony it was of Jesus Christ. See, you don't need title. God can make something out of nothing. You also know in Genesis, God put the sun in its place, the moon and the planet, and the sea, the clouds. And look at the fluff, fluffy cloud here, we can't see, but when you go out later. It's amazing, right? It has a different shape each time. And it's a joy if you had the time to go and look at the sky. It all started from nothing. The earth was without form and empty, formless and void. And the darkness was over the surface of the deep. The earth started from nothing. We too, when we are born, we started from zero. And even as we go in our daily life now, as we mature, as we grow, we go through ups and downs. 
but God can make something good with our life. A purpose fit for his kingdom. Most of us here don't have titles. Some of us were rejected, faced rejection at our workplace. I particularly was retrenched from work because I was one of those considered less well-performing. So when they had to cut two out of ten, then they chose me. Some of us are rejected by our family, cast away. Some of us have been rejected by ex-husband, ex-wife, and we no longer have, are in a marriage relationship. And some of us are rejected by people who measure us by worldly standards and found us not adequate. But God is able to use that disappointment. God is able to use that failure. God is able also to take our physical handicap, our unhealthy bodies, even with our illnesses and disease. God is able to take the emptiness and make something good out of it. Out of nothing, God will bring the impossible. Paul lived whatever happens kind of life because he understood where he came from. In Philippians, later you go to chapter 3, he, he can boast about many things. Circumcised on the eighth day from the tribe of Benjamin, a student under Gamaliel, the famous teacher, and yet he count everything rubbish compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus is Lord. He, and then, because of this, he's able to minister to the Gentiles because he's enabled by God through the Holy Spirit, he's able to do a good thing for God's kingdom. We read in a verse, verse um, in Second Corinthians that God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, you have all that you have need for so that you can abound in every good work because he has scattered his gift to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. And this is the encouragement we have. And we read later in Philippians chapter 1, verse 12 and 13, in our reading just now, he says, uh, Paul says, Now I want you to know, brothers, that my circumstances, which means he was in prison, has actually served to advance the gospel. And as a result, it became clear throughout the palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains, in chains for Christ, because of Christ Jesus not because of crimes he did, not because of his wrongdoing, not because he's a political prisoner, he's in chain because of his testimony of Jesus Christ. So even in prison, Paul is able to say his imprisonment has actually served to advance the gospel. Uh, Paul is able to turn his prison into a pulpit. Even there, He's able to testify about the gospel, to minister to souls for their eternal salvation. Paul can take a minus situation and he can make it a plus. But you cannot have a plus if you take away the minus. <laughs> Some, something I learned preparing from this it never occurred to me a simple sign so Paul is able to take that horizontal situation that is terrible in the prison and all that and he adds the vertical situation and it's a plus he used his situation to further the gospel so even in chain he sees his circumstances as being in chain for Christ Jesus he's there in chains, in prison, to bear witness for Christ. The whole palace guard and everyone else know this. So as we look at our own situation, we are not in chains, but we are in various kinds of restrictions that we don't like. We consider them, some of us chain our own prison, sometimes mental, sometimes physical. 
Do you see it as a restriction? This point is about a change of perspective. In the morning, you don't have a job to go to. You don't have a family to take care of. You do that by changing your mind to say, actually, I have a ministry. I wake up in the morning, the purpose is a ministry. Your testimony is to declare the good news of eternal life with God in heaven, where there's no more tears, no more death. Even in your family, bringing up a small child, that conviction is your testimony to, to the child, that when he or she grows up, they will never forget that there's a God that my father followed, that my mother followed. Your life is, the morning that you wake up, it is not a job, it is a ministry. And like Job, we are in this series of, in the book of Job, in the middle of his great suffering, rather than being comforted, he was scolded by his three friends, accused for asleep. And like Job, even in the midst of his difficulty, like Paul in his prison, like us in our restrictive circumstances, you can, like Job, declare, I know my Redeemer lives. In the end, he will stand on earth. And this was the last week's lesson by Sean. If you have missed that, go look at it. We have it recorded. Ask God to show you the reason and purpose for your current circumstance. Be patient in your endurance and that endurance become a testimony. It is your declaration that my Redeemer lives and by the joy that you have, you testify there is hope in this season of trial that you go through. So we say from uh, Romans, we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God because we know Suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character. And character hope. And this hope doesn't disappoint us. Because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And so led by the Holy Spirit means sometimes we don't see. We don't see the hand of God. Paul lives a whatever kind of happen, whatever happens kind of life. Because he not because he believes in faith. He doesn't believe in faith, but because he knew the Lord works in mysterious ways. God performs wonders. He is the master over every storm. With the breath of his hand, he marked off the heavens. He weighed the mountains on scales and the hills in a balance. That came from Isaiah. You may not fully understand the mystery of God, but you can still trust Him and know that your life is in His hand. Paul tells the Philippians in verse 19, Because I know that through your prayers and the provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, my distress will turn out for my deliverance. He may be in distress, this uh, Apostle Paul, being confined in prison, but he distrusts, but he trusts that in all this, God is in control. And the Holy Spirit guides him, even in that situation. And this is not the first time. Paul has experienced the Holy Spirit countless number of times. That's why he can say this. Paul has been directed by the Holy Spirit a few times others in the book of Acts and the epistles. And Acts chapter 16 speaks about the time when they came to the border of Mysia, and they wanted to enter the city of Bithynia. But the Spirit of Jesus would not permit them. And so they passed by this city, but go down to Troas. The significance of this is Troas is a small village. Bithynia is a big city. Perhaps we want to, we, want to, we ourselves want to preach to a big city. For some of us young people, 
who had the chance to go to the village of Tuau and minister to the people, that is the same experience. If you would allow yourself to go to a small village in the Cagayan Valley of Philippines and to minister to the people there, you would have experienced this direction of the Holy Spirit. He guides us for His purpose and it is good for you. And for us, we have testimonies in the Bible to remind us we have our own lives as testimony of our encounter, how God has guided us in the days past. So when we are in distress, when we are in our own prison, confined, not physically, but by our circumstances, we can remember the, the Lord Jesus, remember the Holy Spirit who will guide us. But sometimes when we're in distress, it's quite difficult to, to bear, to suffer it. We wish it would go away. It will, but sometimes the two days become ten days, become weeks, months, years. It's quite difficult. How long? How long will you wait for God's deliverance? And we're in the middle of this series on the book of Job. The first two chapters of the book of Job, God chose Job to be tempted by Satan. And so he suffered many things. In chapter 3 to 37, that's like 34 chapters, God say absolutely nothing. God remains silent. Job questions God. Job pleads with God. Job complains with, to, to, to the Lord God. But the God didn't the Lord God didn't say anything. The Lord God was silent for all these chapters. How long would you wait for the Lord to answer you? Can you wait 35 chapters? Perhaps you are right now in chapter 30. Five more chapters to go. Huh? Or you are in chapter 30, seven more chapters to go before the breakthrough of your situation, your marriage your family troubles. The church we're trying to build for two and a half years ago, we decided that we should tear down and rebuild. And now what has happened, we're still here. And what we see, dark clouds. COVID has caused construction costs to go up by 30%. Construction delays, some of you with HDB are being delayed one year, two years. What about this church building? So we are in the middle of the book of Job. Will you bear? Will you wait? Will you wait for God's deliverance? Because when God will eventually speak, God will speak. In chapter 38 of the book of Job, God answered him. And when God spoke, you and I, we will just sit down and listen. It's our turn now to be silent. For 37 chapters, God was silent. When God speak, we will be silent. And then like Job, we open our mouth and we repent saying, I have heard you with my ear. Now I have seen your face, seen you face to face. God has not given us a spirit of fear. God has given us a spirit of power. God has given us his love and self-control and through this we can endure and we can go through it God will indeed speak to us in his own good time he knows us he made us and he will not test us beyond what we can bear he will also provide a way out so that we can under, undergo the trial and so I find this useful to be able to reflect on the past, to gain understanding for the future. In Philippians chapter 127, the last verse that we read to this morning, whatever happens, conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. He is not sure what will happen, but he is confident that whatever happens, 
he will live a life that honors the gospel. And for us to live a life that honors, honor the sacrifice of Jesus Christ our Lord. There's something that happened in our ministry, in our life, in our family, but we don't know yet the outcome. We have not seen the conclusion God has planned for us. But if you live long enough and look back, you will always see why God has took you through certain things, why certain things has happened in that particular way. And so I want to conclude with this, before we sing this song, Change My Heart, O oh God. Paul lived a whatever kind of life because he knew there was one who also lived in the age of whatever happened. It's his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As the Lord Jesus Christ lived in whatever happened kind of life, Jesus, our Lord, endured the cross, humbled and shamed, died and was buried. More than that, he was raised to life, is at the right hand of God, and even now interceding for us. I share with you uh, the reflection that I have in preparing this. As an elder of this congregation, I have various times felt a sense of failure. Because various members have come to me when I was sick, when I was disappointed, you never called me. When my relative or so-and-so passed away, you never came to my funeral, to their funeral. And so I felt, felt a sense of failure. But I must also say that quite often, I don't know it. They didn't tell me, but they expect me to know it. And so that is uh, difficult to bear. And so, I felt weary and uh, want to give up. The, the term that came from Hebrew is, I have grown weary. I have lost heart. And I told my family, uh, it's time to step down. I shall not do this anymore. But then, the encouragement is, I, I did express this disappointment. It's useful to express your the troubles. Then my family, they encourage me. And I know you also pray for, for the elders. And so we are upheld by your prayers. And so this community, we uphold one another in prayer. So we pray for one another. And so I want to encourage those of you. Actually, the, the pe people I speak to are not here. They have been disappointed by us, by me as the, as the elder, and say, I would not come to church anymore. Why? I feel, I'm not welcome. I tell you, if you're disappointed with me, don't be disappointed with your brothers and sisters. Come. They need your encouragement. And if you cannot stand the sight of this congregation, do, nev do not ever forsake the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's a lesson from... Um, Johnston Sia, when he speak from the book of Job, there was a lesson. Whatever happens, even your suffering like Job, all your children die, the, uh, the, the property's gone, and you're restricted, uh, beset with all kinds of sores. Job didn't leave God. Job was still with God. So never leave. If you find this congregation unsuitable, don't leave the Lord. Don't leave the congregation. Go to another congregation if you like. Perhaps God is bringing you your talent to serve a different congregation. And so this is my encouragement as I encounter this kind of uh, disappointment. And so I do not grow weary and lose heart. And the word of God is useful for me. Consider the Lord who has suffered in the, such injustice from evil men so that you do not grow weary and lose heart. Because we have not resisted to the point of shedding our blood. And so, I take encouragement from the Holy Spirit, from this community of believers, from your upholding of prayers, 
And so I can say, now there is in store for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on the, that day. And not only for me, but also all who long for his appearing. And may this be an encouragement to you as we stand and sing, Change my heart, O God, may I be like you. song is I know who my beloved just a slight change I know not why God's wondrous grace to me he had made known nor why the unworthy Christ in love redeemed me for his own but I know who I have believed and am persuaded that it is able to keep that which I committed and to keep against that day. I know what all good all you may be reserved for me. Every ways of golden days before his face I see. But I know who I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed. Unto him against that day. I know when and my Lord may come at night or noon they fare. Nor if I walk the will with him or me him in the but I know who I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed and to keep against that day. Shall you join me in prayer to God? Our loving and most gracious and mighty Father, Father, we are indeed so thankful this morning for this opportunity to worship you. We know that each time we worship you, Father, our hearts are rejoicing, our hearts are assured, made assured. And truly, Father, we find the peace, the calmness, the comfort, because Father, we know that our worship to you is something that you will hear us, you will honor, and you will be pleasing to you. And so, Father, as we rejoice this morning uh, in this hour of worship, we ask that, uh, Father, that you will be pleased with what we have offered to you in terms of our time and the efforts that we put forth to worship you. And this morning, we want to be reminded from your word of how um, that in everything that we do help us Father to see it as an opportunity to praise you, to honour you and to glorify you help us Father not to see it as a hindrance yes Father we know that oftentimes it is difficult in our physical bodies we may be facing spiritual struggles as well but Teach us, Father, as we have learned this morning, that you are still in control, that you still watch over us and help us to use this to show to others, to shine the light that you desire of us. 
that we have a God in heaven, that we have you, our loving, our mighty Father, Father, to help us, to give us comfort, and to see us through. And so we thank you, Father, for your message, for this hour of worship. And at this moment, Father, we also are mindful of our brethren overseas who are also facing restrictions, difficulties as a result of the pandemic. We ask that you be with them. We are aware of some of them who are already affected with the virus. The Father, you protect them, provide them healing. And also, Father, we are reminded of the situation in Myanmar. We ask that you be with the people there, particularly with our brethren who have been also suffering as a result, that you continue to protect them as well. And this morning, we are mindful of our brother from a sister congregation, uh, Brother Lee Chok Yen, who is suffering from a cancer relapse. We ask that, Father, you provide the necessary healing and strength to him, and that he may continue to put his trust in you. We thank you for brethren who are concerned for him, that we ask that you be with them also as they minister to his needs. Father, we know that there are many in this congregation, even this morning, who are undergoing medical treatment. We thank you, Father, for your presence that have been with them to show your love and care for them through the healing that they receive or through the treatment that they get. And we are thankful that, Father, their, wave, their faith has not wavered as a result, that they continue to trust in you. Strengthen their faith, strengthen their resolve to commit to walk with you even du during this distressing time. Thank you, Father, for everything that you provide for us. And as we look forward to this week, we know that, Father, you continue to watch over us and be with us. And we want to entrust our lives into your hands, even as we thank you and pray all this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A very good morning to every one of you. And I can say it's morning because it's just one minute before noon time. Welcome all those who are present here this morning. Incidentally, for your information, when we first started, we had a crowd of about 144 in person. That's a very good uh, number to start with. And last week, we actually went up to about 172. And this week, I think we really probably almost reached more than close to 200 people. And that's a very good sign. And uh, for those who are watching us online, we hope that you'll join us today. In fact, when the song leader lead the first song, I'm not too sure whether you are like me, okay? When the congregation starts singing, I feel a chill down my spine and my goosebumps came up, all right? Because we have not done this for one whole year. And praise be to God, as a result of the measures that's taken by the government, the way that's been managed, and your patience and understanding, we are able to arrive today that we can sing together as a congregation. Let's thank God for this opportunity and thank God that we can continue to meet in this manner. And we look forward to even more easing of measures that more things can be done as a result. And we seek your patience and understanding that you continue to comply with the rules and guidance that uh, we have to, to follow. All right? uh, bear in mind that while MCCY or the authorities give us these uh, rules and guidelines, the church also has to provide and submit to them how are we going to comply with it. And as you see now, this is the way that we're going to do it. And so we urge you to uh, cooperate, which you have been doing, and for your understanding in the reason why we are doing what we are doing uh, in this particular place. Uh, today, uh, I want to say now is, we, like what was echoed by Brother Terry earlier this morning, we have our first live in-person Bible class. And that is something that is uh, uh, going to happen for the next uh, foreseeable future. Now, we encourage you to uh, come for the Bible class uh, when you can, so that after the Bible class, you will join us in the worship. I know it will take a bit of sacrifice on your part, sacrifice of what you plan to do, or you may have somewhere else to go, or somewhere else to do, something else to do. But look at it as a sacrifice, because then we can come together to study God's Word, and then follow on with the worship uh, together with God. Some announcements before we are dismissed. 
our uh, safe entry uh, checking continues. As you can see, uh, as you come in, okay, uh, you'll be given the sticker to sit in the respective zone. Uh, please remain in the zone, all right, so that you minimize uh, the uh, cross transmission. And as you leave later, I'll just uh, brief again on the sequence of leaving by the respective zones, all right. And do not mingle after the service. I guess it is very tough not to say your uh, pleasantries. I think you can probably go ahead, but avoid mingling uh, so that everyone can uh, be uh, to minimize the uh, transmission of the virus. You will have a card on your respective fields. Okay, I know that all of us are aware that we have this safe entry trace together app and so on. Uh, the reason for this card is twofold. One is that if there's any uh, particular case that within the zone, it will help us to be a bit more targeted to identify those people that are sitting in the zone. And secondly, there's a provision for you to write your prayer request. All right, we have uh, we have a number of prayer requests that's uh, given to uh, the elders and uh, to the leaders in the past few weeks, and you we continue to. Uh, encourage you to do so, so that the elders can pray for you. And if you wish for this to be published in the focus, do let us know, and then we will publish in the focus as well. The James class is uh, back since uh, last week, and we thank the parents for their efforts to bring the children back. In fact, it's really wonderful to see the children. I've not seen them for a while. Some have grown taller, some have grown bigger, and certainly we welcome uh, them back. So if you have uh, children, uh, they are uh, eligible for the GEMS class. In fact, not only the GEMS class, all the Bible classes are back. And we encourage you to uh, come back and bring them along. All right? And for the GEMS parents and adults who come during that uh, particular hour at 9.30, uh, as mentioned earlier, there will be adults live streaming adult Bible class in the auditorium as well. This morning, we have approximately about 50 people, and that's a very good sign. Uh, and we hope to see more and more of you joining us on Sunday at 9.30 hour. Something to look forward to, the Elder's Annual Prayer Session that will happen on the 1st of May. We want to invite you as elders to join us for this prayer session. In fact, it is something that we believe the church should do together as often as we can, if not at least at an appropriate time annually. You know, all of us have a heart when we see their needs around, whether physical or spiritual needs. And I think this is a good opportunity for us to really join our hands and our hearts together, together with the elders, to pray for the needs of the church. This particular prayer session, there will be a bit of a focus. We will be focusing on us as disciples of Christ, how we ought to, what we ought to do, and we need God to be on the side, to, to help us, to strengthen us, to be the disciples that he wants us to be. We will be praying for the work of the church, the ministries, things that they are coming ahead. We want God to be moving ahead of us and not him coming by the way. We will be praying for members' needs, the concerns that you have. And from next week onward, we encourage you to submit your needs and prayer requests so that we can pray for you during this elders' prayer. And finally, we want to remember our mission uh, uh, partners overseas, that they also have their own prayer needs. So we encourage you, mark this date, you'll be on Zoom on 1st of May, 10 to 11.30, and we encourage and invite you to join the elders for this prayer session. We thank everyone uh, who drove here and and I've been very cooperative to park their car uh, nicely so that uh, all the parking lots are optimized. Uh, some of you uh, who realize that there may not be enough parking lots uh, can park in the Capricorn and certainly you can clock your 10,000 steps by walking there and back. Oh. Next week, uh, this coming Wednesday, the online Bible class on the book of uh, Leviticus will continue with Brother Lian Chai teaching it. And next Sunday, live uh, Bible class at 9.30 hour where Brother Irving Wan will share from the book of Job again entitled, When Life Explodes. And uh, we look forward to the live stream worship and we hope to see more of you, those who are online, to come and join us next week and to hear Brother Terry share with us a message from the Word of God. Alright, so the final part, the dismissal. Let me uh, run through again. Essentially, those who are sitting in the first two rows will dismiss to the front 
uh, exit and those in the back row uh, will, see, will exit to the rear exit and of course the only exit for the balcony is through one exit at the back and there will be a sequence as well and so after the closing song uh, I will uh, remind you all to be seated and then we will call your uh, zone number to exit uh, accordingly uh, in sequence and so uh, we like to thank uh, God for this morning as I, prayed, uh, as I prayed earlier God has been wonderful has been watching over us and certainly we, all of us present here we know that God is always in control and so let's look forward with uh, confidence with uh, comfort uh, for this week and let us all stand for this closing song and sing with joy and with the understanding Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washing His blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Saviour all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Saviour all the day long. Perfect submission, Perfect delight, visions of rapture, now first on my side. Angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Saviour all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Saviour all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Saviour am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, blessing His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Saviour all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Saviour all the day long. Please be seated and have a blessed weekend. All right, can the, those in the auditorium please exit and those uh, in the blue zone can exit and front. Let's try to do it expe expeditiously so that those people that are seated uh, in the different zones can also exit soon. Alright, those in the yellow zone can go ahead.
Okay, it looks like the balcony is clear. The green zone. Okay, because the front row is clear very fast, the red zone as well can use the front exit.